worst. Uh, my name is Greg Andrew. I'm here with our creative director, Mark Saul. I say our because my home was with my private home, then turned to my studio, and then to a little headquarters for an uh, entertainment company I run. It's now a public attraction, which is actually closed down like the rest of the entertainment business around the world. Um, but we're building a new outdoor experience. So we're starting in the kind of middle of one of the outdoor rooms that we call the Portico Portals. And in this, in this portico, there are a thousand and one tales, just like the story of Scheherazade, a thousand and one nights. And we're building a new experience of starting outdoors that's called the Riddle of the Sphinx. And it's this kind of an adventure through a storybook land. And we're tailoring it so that it works specifically for um, people who are sheltering in place together. We're going to do three to four experiences a day. You don't have to mix with other people. You might see them off at a distance. And it's a really fun, uplifting uh, tour for three different art gardens. The first one being, we're calling it the, the Garden of Youth, where you celebrate your innocence. And it's very playful with riddles and games to play. And then we go into the Garden of Adulthood, which is uh, celebrating our sensuality. And then we go into the final garden, the Garden of Wisdom, which is exploring the unknown all the way up to death which is likely the most greatest unknown thing. So it's this very um, fun thing, even though it ends in death. It's, it's kind of, when you see our version of death, I think you're going to enjoy it. But <laughs> what do you think? Great, yes. And we actually have one of the artists. There's artists all over the place. I want to introduce you. Wait, I'm going to put my mask on here and I'll yep. try to, to oh, do it. Uh, the artist, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Nicole. I was an intern here for about a year. Now I've been working with Greg as both a performing artist in the past and now a mosaic artist. Arts kind of in general. Now, what are you doing here? This is a what's well, going to be a scarlet macaw, but it is a macaw bird, and it's going to hang up and be mosaic, covered in cement, and then just kind of like how this room looks, but in the right color. And it'll be kind of an inch, so that's going to be the it needs to be a mother in nature, but all these interesting. Rescue um, parents of yes. So it has. We'll see you through another doorway. So, yeah. All right. Okay. So they're going to come into the house. I'm working off my mask here so you can see me better. Um, and the house has been closed for at least four months now. So you viewers are the first to kind of come inside here. It's uh, I've turned it into a studio. You can kind of look at the mess around here, down around. We're using it as a, an art studio for the, I think we're building something like 27 installations outside the house right now. And um, we've always done tours in here. This room is called a dusk hall. It's about sort of purging yourself of whatever you think you don't need for the moment and then moving on into the house for a tour. Um, we, we had these kind of formalized tours for a long time, but today we're just gonna be casual. We're gonna see what we run into here. I feel that anything we've done before the pandemic is absolutely irrelevant. So we've been where people are saying we're waiting to go back to normal. We're like, ah, we are just moving on to abnormal at a very fast pace. Um, the name of my company is Velocity, by the way. So we're just moving with Velocity. I'm gonna go through this curtain right here. Wonderful, Thank you for everyone who's, walked, who's watching from home. Uh, this is very interactive. So if you have any questions, just let us know and uh, we'll get to it during the tour. All right. So. Here we are in the solstice room, which is typically um, a gathering room or a little bit of a theater here. Um, it, it's certainly a, sort of a hookah bar. It's based on um, mathematical art from many ancient cultures around the world who, who um, using math in their art ended up, I always say, they ended up discovering or inventing actually architecture and things, inventing the dome and arches and things. So I used a lot of math in various ancient cultures in here that, um, that led to what we call the seven wonders of the ancient world, which are all man-made monuments. The only one that still exists is uh, one of the pyramids on the plateau of Giza. But it's just to really marvel at the absolutely extraordinary achievements of humanity and what we can do if we set our minds to it. I would say in this house, nothing's impossible. There's no problems. There's just solution. You just got to work hard. You also call this the rabbit hole. Why do you call it a rabbit hole? Well, I don't call it the rabbit hole. So a lot of things that happen in the house is our guests assign stories. So as, as the 30 something years we're doing, our guests assign stories to the house. So I'm always about allowing people to look at the art and assign stories to it. And then I adapt those stories. And I'm sure there's gonna be lots of new stories adapted to it. The painting I think is always doing in my heart because the painting up here is a, um, it's a storyboard for a show I produced several years ago called Heliosphere, which is a journey through the solar system. And, all the characters, we personified elements of our solar system, the planets, the, the aspects of it. We turned a, a famous uh, San Francisco icon, the Trans-America Pyramid into a rocket ship and blasted it off into the, into the cosmos. So there's just so, every, everything in the house is not a collection, it's made right here. And it is in fact, 
a story that celebrates life and wonderment and, and what's beyond. And they ask a lot of questions that have maybe no answers. And I welcome you all to ask as many questions as you'd like, because typically these tours are fully immersive, interactive, and it's always strange for me not to see who's out there. So Kevin, if there's anyone saying anything, making comments, let us know. It's always nice to, to address our viewers somehow. Yeah, so uh, we do have a couple of questions coming in. So oh, I, I mean, this is right very here. elaborate. Uh, what, uh, yeah, how long, like, how long have you been working on your home? Well, th this home I've been working on since 1980. So I think that's almost exactly 40 years right now. Um, I started alone with these two hands. In fact, this is what I often say I do with my own two hands. And at the time, I've always had um, a costume shop as part of our business. So it was always a professional stitcher, a seamstress on board. So it was me and a, and a seamstress in this room. And it, this room took us about two and a half to three years in the, in the current state. You see it oftentimes these rooms change quite a bit. But I've been working on it 40 years um, over the years. As of today, we have 27 what I call studio artists or makers working on the house today. At this moment, I think there's about 10 or so still here. Um, so it's constantly evolving, constantly changing, constantly adapting to the times, which is what we're doing right now. It's actually really exciting to tell you the truth. Um, so it's definitely, I always say I can account for my time. It's in, it's in the walls here. You know? Well, amazing. I think, I think we're ready to go uh, up the rabbit hole. Yeah, I'm going to just turn on the lights here. We've got two. Two people sitting in the dark. <laughs> so it's, uh, introduce yourself, Akasha and Alina. Alina Hi. and I have been working together for uh, how many years? I don't even know. Um, it's been 19? Almost no, 20 no, years I've been yeah. working with Alina. We, we started you know, working in dance and uh, Alina's always been integrated into my acts. What I think is important to say is today, you know, with our business being closed down, literally closed down with no option for anything. They was just saying you're closed, but you still have to pay mortgages and taxes and insurance and this and that. So today, Alina happens to have a little knack for bookkeeping. So the way we all help each other is so Alina today is coming and help us to kind of condense some of our bills so we can keep going. And, um, and then hopefully we'll be selling tickets to our outdoor experience soon. And we invite everybody out there to join. And Akasha has been working with us since she was born, plays mm -hmm. some drums with us. We're teaching her to play piano today. And they both work with snakes. And they both work with snakes. Um, let's see, do I have a snake today? No, no. real snakes here today. <laughs> <laughs> The kitchen, it's a hard working kitchen. The kitchen, I say, it's about the cardinal points, the, the, the wall over here, it's the, the sun rising in the east. What I think is fascinating about this house is that the art is literally spews out of us with such inspiration, very detailed over a lot of time. And the stories that surround them, which are rather profane, come and sometimes, sometimes I meant profound and oftentimes <laughs> profane. <laughs> Are, um, they kind of come later. In fact, we're working in a garden right now. We don't have internet outside, so I can't show you, but there was very little art out there. And as we we're creating a new experience based on the middle of the Sphinx and the path of life, we realized some of the art we had already built outside actually had these messages in it without us even knowing it. So it's, it's kind of remarkable. Do you have anything to say, yeah, Marshall? No, that is a great mosaic. Talk about the mosaic over here. Well, here he's pointing at the, cam the, the cabinets are hand painted by an artist named Stefan who works in the Art Deco style of um, Air K. On the mosaics in this room were started by Laurel True Mosaics, and she uh, actually taught several of our artists to continue the mosaics. The mosaics have been ongoing in this house for probably 25 or 30 years now. In fact, today, I think we had six hands working on new mosaics, three-dimensional. This one happens to be the solar system. All right. And it's just a regular hardworking kitchen. Hello. Oh, oh, yeah. I love that mosaic. It's a micro mosaic of a dragonfly. Uh, the, the dawn room seems to be a very central room in the house. It's where we work. It's where all the artists gravitate to. It's sort of a, I, I think in um, business terms, they call it a think tank. We're a creative tank where we're actually doing our, the work on paper that we have to do here, the writing, the math. All the creative juices come, all the creative, come, out, right come in out right here on this yeah. table. Guided by Buddha, I guess. Three Buddhas in here. The dawn room, I say the dawn room is about realization. I think this is the place where we capture realization, literally. So many re realizations are fleeting and in this room, realizations change. So the stories change. I happen to like this little niche over here with the storyboard for a book that one of our artists is writing. It's an allegory that goes to the house. I suppose you can compare it to kind of an Alice in Wonderland thing, but it'd be twisted where we, where we turned all of our 
sense into sense. I always like, I like to ask people, what does your sense of humor smell like? Are you in need of more magnificence or more indecent? How sensual are you? Amazing, amazing. Greg, okay. Angela, we're getting a couple more questions. So Let's hear them. I'm gonna stand over here. Uh, someone wants to know how, you know, the kitchen is so intricate. How long did it, did it take you to get the cabinets painted and all the mosaic work? How long did it, did it take to do okay, all? Well, it, it happens over a long period of time. So I think what's important to note is that this house, I'm an artist, I never had a ton of money or anything like that, but I, I use my time to do it. So the kitchen, these rooms typically take between three to four years to get to the state there. We have one room I would take into that took seven years, but it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real laborious thing where it's one piece at a time and they change. Um, oftentimes they change due to the times, like the room that we're sitting in right now, I started it during the AIDS uh, epidemic uh, because I was losing a lot of friends and I was trying to, to create a, a brightness. Um, and, then, and then the 1989 earthquake hit and that, that sort of compounded um, devastation that was happening. So I kept, uh, building and creating and it really marked times and in, in history oftentimes the most devastating times in fact during this pandemic inspired more than ever so it's always kind of fascinating um, how, how the art evolves um, and it does it takes time and it's a lot of found and recycled materials that we use um, this room we redid it again probably in the last few months because all the artists are gravitating here so I thought, well, let's ref just go to refresh the room. So we, we changed it to like all this stuff you see fellow here. And so uh, as you know, everything is closed, but uh, August 13th, we are opening again, and it's going to uh, Amazing. And, uh, and Greg, actually, we have uh, someone who's yeah. uh, really fascinated by the Dawn Room. They, they want to know, how do you come up with the names of your rooms? You know. Uh, that, that's a great question. I always joke. I never name anything. I, I, I'm usually working on, in fact, I've never named the house. People call it the Great Angel of the Eve. I was like, what do you, I never called it that. But the, the names happen sometimes 15, 20, sometimes even 30 years later, where we were, um, as there was a demand to get tours, it happened quite organically. We started storyboarding things. We realized a, a small child years ago. me around he said this room's like dawn this room's like afternoon so we started naming the rooms different times today um a couple of, like there's a dust call the solstice room the eclipse room i wasn't able to name the rooms the dawn room so each one of them represent a different time of day or a different mood um sometimes we change the names of the rooms but um that came about rather organically but most of this level of house there's three and a half levels are are named after different times of of the day Thank, thanks for that question i forgot about that all right come on up and see this little bit of a the All installation. Right, here's Nicole again out here, down here. <laughs> and these are made by multiple different artists. So each one kind of has a different story, either celebrating the life of a family member or like we have one over here representing the Black Lives Matter movement. And each one kind of tells a story that can relate and celebrate different people in our lives. Many who have. Like whether they are gone or still alive, but celebrating life. Back to that. All right, let's come on back up this way. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you. And I've got to say, Nicole is, is really, it's been amazing to see artists just create from their hearts, from their souls, the serendipity of the stories that happen when, when we just allow each other to do the art. And then when we have 27 artists working and when you see it all come together, it's, it's, it's a, nothing short of a miracle, I would say. Um, so I really welcome you guys to come check out our, our, it's our first ever actually outdoor installation that's meant to be permanent. Um, and it, it's gonna be pretty, I'm actually super excited about it. And we've, we've been testing it enough that we failed so many times already that now we're really ready to succeed with you all. We've been doing pretty good lately. Amazing. And, uh, and Greg Angelo, think about, um, Natalia wants to know what your favorite place in your house is. Well, my, my that's, thank you, Natalia. Uh, my favorite place is always what I happen to be working on. So right now I'm absolutely digging being outside. I'm a kid, I grew up in Chinatown, San Francisco, very urban. 
I, the, the, there's been a little bit of garden around the house for a long time. I planted things, but I never quite knew how to nurture them. So right now, I'm just like everybody, I think we're enjoying convening with nature rather than just um, visiting it. So I've been really enjoying, we're right near the ocean here. So there's just all these beautiful mist coming in the summertime. So it's, it's a whole outdoor experience right now that I'm enjoying more than ever. I also always seem to enjoy what, what I can share with others. I'm not that much of a solitary guy. So right now we can share the outdoor space with people. So that's what I'm enjoying. And I wouldn't, I'm not sure that there are rooms out there. There's three different gardens, but that's what I'm enjoying now. But I like to hear what you guys are enjoying from whatever you can see through here. We're gonna unveil one of the hallways here. Yeah, everyone keep those questions coming and let us know which, uh, which rooms you, uh, you like the most that we're seeing. All right, so here is one of the lights are off here, but here we have the Midnight Hall, which is halfway illuminated. <laughs> Should have charged the battery. <laughs> All, of course, the magnificent time of day when we ship from one day to the other, sort of, it really represents, isn't it a miracle that we all have a new chance every, every single day? There's all kinds of details in this thing. This, this corridor really leads to, I think, six different rooms. So I'm going to um, lead the way, Marcelo. All right, come Let's with go me. Through. Right here to this portal. Got some lights in there. So, so the green room, its function um, has always been, it's typically been our bookkeeper's office. It's, it's kind of set up like a bedroom, but if you look at the bed, uh, the time of day of this room is the green flash. A lot of people don't know about the green flash. It's that millisecond time of day when the sun sets over the ocean horizon. This house happens to face the ocean horizon, so I'm always on the roof looking at the sunset. And there's this millisecond flash of green light, and that's what the, the bed represents that happening. It's also about light. It's about the mysteries of life, about all the questions we have of life, it's about questioning life. It's about sex and sensuality and how everything is co-creating, how everything comes from a seed or an egg or a spore and how it's constantly, constantly evolving and multiplying. So every aspect of the room is literally quite about, you know, it's about the force of life, which some people would say is sex. What would you say, Marcelo? Well, since it's, it's overwhelming. The green is just overwhelmed when you come in here. You come into a total different uh, mood. And it's funny, actually, I haven't been in here for a long time because we're really not using the interior right now. Usually, this is a bustling room. It's kind of, it's been sort of, um, I've now become the housekeeper. <laughs> so I've locked off a lot of the rooms. All right, we're going to enter yet another portal right this way. Right, got it. I'll let the camera go first. So here we are in what we call the galaxy room, which goes a little bit beyond a time of day and instead not only our time of day is based on our star that we call the sun. So on the ceiling here, we have a, a model of our, of our galaxy, which I forget how many four trillions of stars in our galaxy, each one, many of them, most of them actually having their own planetary systems. And um, so there, this is starting to question beyond how all the different perspectives there could be from life just within our own galaxy, which just is just a tiny little piece of what makes up you know, the universe. And oftentimes in here we have discussions about the past, present, and specifically the future, about what will our future hold? And before the pandemic, everybody seemed to have these convictions about what the future held. I've never had any conviction about that at all. And now I think with the ask people, everyone's like, I don't know. I really don't know. And I think that's the truth always of the future is live responsibly now, be creative, be kind, and hopefully the future will bring something good. Uh -uh. Oh, this is my this is my little love nest right here, my napping card. <laughs> Takes hours. <laughs> well, you just you just answered a question of mine. I wanted to know if that was a a piece of furniture or some kind of like. It is actually. Let me get in it. Area I usually, that you had there. So I usually have to take. Usually the rules are I take off my clothes to go in it, but I don't think this is that kind of show. So I'll just kind of slip on into my little den here. It's a it's a piece of furniture. And this is actually uh, designed by an industrial designer named Alberto Frias in, um, in Arizona. I had a small, uh, I partnered with a small business in Arizona for a while and discovered this artist. And um, it, was, it was quite the journey in, in making this, uh, this particular piece of furniture. And he, I'm not sure if he's, I'm sure he's still designing them. I'm not sure. 
Yeah, I, I can imagine uh, laying in there and like picturing myself as like the star child at the end of 2001 in Space Odyssey. Exactly. I mean, it's like, you know, get your Space Odyssey on. <laughs> All right, to the next. And here, not exactly a, a, another, it's, we call it the falling star room uh, where the ceiling supposed to, there's on the exterior of the roof, there's a, a, a mosaic of a shattered star that hit the earth. And here it's often been, um, like if you look down towards the table here, there are these crystal balls. It's sort of a room of wishes and hopes and dreams and all the divination that people seem to latch onto in this life. Um, hope, I think you would call it these days. I think, there's, I think people are really longing for a lot of hope now. And like I said, when we reopen the interior again, whenever that happens, if it's in a year or two or three years, whatever it is, no doubt we'll come up with absolutely new stories and new ways of, um, of viewing the art you know, here and continuing to make it as well. There's some gardens right outside of here, which we're not gonna go into right now because they're a little unkept because all of our focus has been going into our new installation. <laughs> it's probably all weeds right now. Um, it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> Uh, well, wonderful. Yeah, Greg, Greg Angelo, I mean, a lot of these rooms are themed and so vastly different from each other. You know, how, how does a new room come to be? Do you like, do they just evolve over the years? Do you have like a certain need that you're trying to meet and then they come uh, to play or do you have yeah. like a planned vision ahead of time? Uh, there's never a planned vision, that's for sure. There's certainly never ever been a planned vision. It's usually I'm workshopping something for maybe an installation I was commissioned to do for the public or, or I've just found an object and I start building around it or I'm just playing. Oftentimes I'm just playing. Uh, like I said, most of these rooms have been five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times renewed. But once, once we get to this level of detail, we don't change them that quickly. We just sort of start maintaining them and, and getting more into the nuance and details. I don't think so. It's all of the above, but it's never ever planned. Um, they're, they're built they're imagined and they're built. And usually I work very fast. The, the, the moment I imagine something, I start it. Uh, uh, one thing, in fact, when we were in the green room, I should have mentioned the green room was one of the first rooms that I really did as a whole. And at the time I, I was quite young. I didn't have much money and I, I had saved money to buy this new kind of paint that had this really rich pigment. And, I, and I, it hit me one day, I'm gonna paint the room green. I've replastered the walls and I, and I realized I didn't have a paintbrush. So I was like, oh shit, I looked around. I ripped, took my shirt off, ripped it up and I painted the whole room with my shirt and it you know and so that's how fast these things start and then maybe a year or two two three years into it it starts evolving into other things so it's um it's organic i would say well wonderful as we as we move along uh, everyone who's watching if you have any questions uh, let us know and we'll get to them shut that door All right, so here's a, um, the next room tends to be kind of the uh, crown jewel of the house. This was, um, again, I mentioned it's an old house. Out of necessity, I had to rebuild this room. It was a bathroom. I walked into it one day and fell right to the floor and it was so badly rotted that I hired a few of my friends and we made the whole thing out of concrete. We did a concrete floor, concrete foot walls, concrete ceiling. And the only reason we did it is like, I don't want to fall through the floor again. And whatever I build here is going to be remarkably heavy. And it sat that way for maybe three years and about six, seven years into it, uh, you'll see the results right now. This you might call Waters of the World or sometimes I call it Amphitrite's Closet. Amphitrite is the um, daughter of Poseidon. And it's looking at life on a molecular level. So it's a mosaic that you walk into really showing the miracle of how everything in existence is water, is life. And, um, and in realizing that you realize we harbor a consciousness that can actually not only do anything, but we can think and dream of anything. Therefore, I always say anything is possible. And this is where you've got to hold your chin because it's going right. to drop once you see it. <laughs> All right, come on in. All right, Nick. So an another thing I find interesting about the house and the stories that come, there's a, you'll hear a lot of uh, what we're guiding. We talk about the cardinal points, which is north, south, east, and west. So if you point the camera right at me, which is on the north wall, 
I didn't think this thing out. I wanted to create, I, I was starting to fall in love with beluga whales for some reason. So I wanted to do a beluga whale, which obviously right from the north, but I just did it on this wall, not knowing it was the north wall. And it turns out there's this whole story of this beluga whale busting out of an iceberg saying I was just born, at the time I was working with a lot of artists who were here on, um, on uh, what's the word called, when they're, when they're kicked out of their culture, but on uh, asylum. So I did a, this version of, an, of a whale that was like, he was just born in the wrong culture. He wasn't accepted. He was, a, he was a big old drag queen. He wasn't accepted. So he's busting out of the iceberg, heading to San Francisco. So this whole wall here happened to be in the north, but we didn't realize that until about two years later. And where we're Nick is filming now, it's the uh, east wall. All kinds of stories, all kinds of pictures. Here's our kind of a... Our sea turtle is kind of based on, on urban rappers. I, we have a studio in West Oakland, and I kind of based this on a lot of the, the uh, street artists I was seeing out there. And of course, the window, it's hard to see. It's a little burning out as uh, Triton or Poseidon or Neptune, many, whatever name you want to call them by. And the house is very well used. I mean, this is where I bathe and use the toilet and shave, and it's a very used. Um, it's a very used house. In fact, when it's open, it's an overused house. I mean, there's hundreds of people using the toilet. I don't miss that. <laughs> Amazing. And with as a uh, as a as a detailed, intricate bathroom, I that that gets used. I, I have to ask, how easy is it to keep it, it all clean? Well, you know, I've always had I've always had. Um, because the house went as a business, there was always about, on staff, there were four to five housekeepers that would have different zones of the house and would really work to do that. But now that, not only because we're closed, but because we were actually, we were, we're, we're not allowed to open for business, which means our income was cut. I am now housekeeping. And it is incredibly difficult to keep clean, actually. And, it's, um, and I'm, I'm a bit of a neat freak. So is the man holding the camera right here. <laughs> and, uh, so it's really important to me to keep things clean and, uh, and, and the, just the process of cleaning to me is like just keeping the energy flowing. So I spend probably three hours a day now between 11 p.m. and one in the morning just doing those zones that the other people did and uh, keeping it clean, which is a really important thing. And now I'm, you know, of course, learning how to do gardening as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a task and I'll, that I'll keep, I'll just keep at it until we open again and we can afford to bring on, you know, staff again. Come on up. It's super amazing and and as we're we're walking through i know christy noticed you have just so many like textiles and beads and color everywhere where where do you find all the materials that create these rooms well come on come on in next thing get to the light here so that's that's a good question so most of the materials it's funny they come in different ways and um, we I have a, a, I have four studios downstairs in the, in the lowest level of the house is where our studios are and over the years I've been doing it, anytime a customer or a maker dies or closes shop or something, they somehow gift me uh, stuff, materials, which I value highly. So we have a whole storage system of materials in the underbelly of the house. And I always say it's as if these materials are really just waiting to be turned into this. And that's what we do. There's really no collection of anything here. It's all made by the hands of the artists and imagined and made by the hands of the artists who work here. This, I think you can say is a collection. There's, there's a, this room is, is um, crowned by shoes from different parts of the world. Now I wasn't at, well, during my travels, entertaining and performing and just out of curiosity, I was always sort of found it interesting what the shoes were. Some, some of them I would actually wear, some of them were historical, some of them I use on stage. And eventually I kind of, some of them they'd go out of commission, I would just sort of put them on the wall. And it turns out, I think we've seen many installations in the world that are very powerful with shoes. You see, you see the shoes of people who've died in the Holocaust. You see, you know, shoes of, of fashionistas, the shoes, you know, there's all kinds of stories. This, the story here is about humankind. It's about humankind as one organism, our hopes, our dreams, our visions, our memories. We all have exactly the same desires, really. So that's what the room's really showing. No matter what culture, no matter where you're from, what time, there's very similar, um, so there's more similarities and there are differences from us. So most likely, um, you know, these days everyone seems to be choosing teams, which is to me quite ridiculous. So as we open this room up again, and we actually are going to um, open the door to this room because there is an outdoor door to, to let people on a riddle of the snake store 
gaze into uh, an optimistic view of humanity. In fact, I think we should, we might have an artist out here. Well, we have Nicole again with a final product. Hey, Nicole. <laughs> There's, There's Nicole. more artists out here, so I was looking at some different artists. Come over here, they're kind of close to Nicole here, I think. Nicole has been working on birds. I do some birds that are more for the inside than the outside as well. So it's kind of one of her final thing. What type of bird is it? You know, I started just making up birds <laughs> and I kind of just bought a base of it. And I was like, who needs it to be a real thing? That's, that's how I think too. Like, we just make, make things. Well, it, it, it's for someone. So I mostly just asked like, what are your three favorite colors? And they chose yellow, orange, and blue, which seemed like a really weird mixture to me. So I was more just intrigued on color theory than like an actual bird for this. If you aim the camera, oh, thanks, Nicole. And aim the camera over here too. Aaron, Ellie. So turn around for a second. Hey. So hold up what you're working on because we don't have internet over there. So for the day, what's the, what's the word for it? Papa something? Uh, this is papel picado. Papel um, picado. Or pecked paper. You have two um, sentences. Get it out. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a traditional method of celebrating the Los Muertos. Oftentimes they're used as a storytelling element, but they're also decorative in altares and ofrendas. And these ones will be part of our, our Day of the Dead garden, and it tells the story of? Um, it tells the story of Magarona, um, who's also- You'll get that story when you come. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, very famous. <laughs> mm. uh, amazing. And, and it's important to know that, like, you usually do, like, in, inside intricate home tours to the public, but because of the coronavirus, you can't. So now you are doing a whole new show st starting August the 13th, right? That's right, Secrets on Sale for August 3rd. And wh what's gonna be nice about that, because I, as I mentioned earlier, these installations take us up to five years to build. Well, we've been doing this four months. Luckily, we have almost 30 artists on board that are working around the clock to do. So part of the experience is gonna be that you get to actually witness the work being created, which I think is really exciting. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get a behind the scenes tour. The, the experience itself is pretty well crafted. There's lots of games and engagement and stuff to do together outdoors in a safe area. But but part of that will be seeing these artists at work. And I'm actually really excited to walk out every day and see this thing come together piece by piece. It's, it's pretty amazing. It is kind of cool. It is. Wonderful. So if you're in the San Francisco area, check out the Greg Angelo Museum. They're doing a brand new uh, outdoor uh, COVID friendly tour uh, starting August the 13th. Where, where should they go to, uh, to learn more? The uh, gregangelomuseum.com. It's the only thing we're offering these days. So it's pretty easy to find. You don't have to dig that deep. <laughs> we used to be doing 20 shows a week. Now here's one. <laughs> it's fun. It's been actually fun. I'm excited to, to welcome small groups again back here and to just really explore and laugh and play and have fun. And even though yeah. the tour opens on the 13th, we already are taking reservations. So make sure that you book yourself right now. Yeah, we only have three slots today. We can only take one booking per slot because we can't mix people anymore. So it'd just be if you're a couple, you get that slot to yourself. So yeah, it's designed for people who are shelter in place. Yeah. You're either two or eight, then you can come and join us. What we're doing is we're calling it, come play with us outside. And, and I keep saying it's, as it evolves, I'm realizing it really is a storybook adventure. And you're, uh, you, you you become the character in the story. And we actually are even making this giant book that you kind of read from. It's fun. The guy you to all these different places with riddles and clues. And there is a treasure at the end. And it's not material. Uh, don't tell them. Don't tell <laughs> it's them. It's not a material it treasure. It's better than material. Yeah. <laughs> what if it's not the cold. <laughs> book your tickets early because they. it sounds like they will sell out. And uh, thank you, everyone uh, watching us. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos, be sure to subscribe to the Weird Homes Tour YouTube page, like us, uh, ring the notification bell, all that good stuff. And uh, thank you, Greg Angelo, for showing us around your home. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure, Kevin. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. And y'all have a great evening. And bye. Bye for now.